Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we have some real interesting theorems involving proportions. There are three of them, and I'm going to talk to you about each one in detail. We'll show you proofs for two. Okay, so first one, theorem 65. It's called the side splitter theorem. And what it says is if I have a line that's parallel to one side of a triangle, so I have this line here that's parallel to the, this base of the triangle, and intersects the other two sides, it's going to divide those two sides proportionally. So what that means is that <clears throat> if this length here, the segment, uh, divides these two sides and it's parallel to this base here, then x over y is going to be equal to a over b. So x over y is going to be equal to a over b. So it divides those two sides proportionally. Now additionally, we're going to figure out that also there's going to be a relationship between the bases or the lines that are parallel to each other. And if we think about it, we really have, if they're proportional, we really have two similar triangles. We have, <clears throat> and let's call this uh, A, H, A, B, C, and D. So we know that angle H is congruent to itself. And if the two sides are proportional to each other, then we know that triangle H, A, C is going to be similar to HBD uh, because we have an angle here and two sides that are proportional. We have AH and HC proportional to HB <clears throat> and HD or X plus Y. So what that does is that tells us that also R and Q are going to be in a similar relationship, but the relationship is not necessarily the same as X to Y. The relationship is going to be from X to or HA to all of the entire side of this one side of the triangle or HB. So I have X is to Y as A is to B and then I have X is to X plus Y as A is to A plus B and also as R is to Q. So common error here is to say that X is to Y as A is to B as R is to Q but that's not actually the case. It ends up being that X is to X plus Y as A is to A plus B as R is to Q because R is the base of this smaller triangle and Q is the base of the larger triangle. So the side lengths for the smaller triangle are X and A and the side lengths of the larger triangle are X plus Y and A plus B. All right. So just be careful when you're establishing those parallel sides that the relationship is a little bit different than X to Y and A to B. Okay, so next theorem. Uh, if we have three or more parallel lines, let's do this, uh, intersected by two transversals, the parallel lines divide the transversals proportionally. So I have two transversals A, B, and we'll call this C, D here. And then I have <clears throat> three parallel lines, the so two transversals cut the three parallel lines. Then I know that X is to Y as A is to B. All right, so let's prove that this is actually the case. And we're going to use the side splitter theorem, the theorem that we just learned, in order to prove that. All right, so we're going to say that <clears throat> by the side splitter theorem, AC over CE is equal to AG over AF. So AC over AE is equal to AG over AF. I can also say that BD, BD over BF is going to be equal to AG over AF. So if BD over BF is equal to AG over AF, and AC over AE is equal to AG over AF, then AC over AE also has to be equal to BD over BF. All right, so AC over AE is going to be equal to BD over BF, or we can also say that AC over CE is equal to BD over DF. All right, so the two proportions that we can get from this particular proof. All right, moving on. Last theorem is called the angle bisector theorem. And what it says is if we have a ray, so for example, ray <clears throat> BD, ray BD bisects an angle of a triangle, and that angle is going to be ABC. It divides the opposite sides into segments that are proportional to the adjacent sides. So that tells me that <clears throat> this ray divides this opposite side into segments A, D, and D, C that are proportional to the adjacent sides A, B, and B, C. So now we can say that X is to Y as A is to B. 
assuming that angle one is congruent to angle two. So again, if I have a ray that bisects the angle, then I can say that it divides this, uh, this opposite side, AD to DC, uh, that is proportional to AB over BC or the adjacent sides. All right, let's see if we can use that particular theorem. Actually, let's prove that theorem first. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna redraw this triangle ABD, and we have the ray in this case, which is gonna be AC, and we know that angle one is congruent to angle two, it's the angle bisector theorem, that's what's given. Then we're gonna extend a line from B that's gonna be parallel to AC. So here B, let's call it E, is gonna be parallel to AC, and we're gonna extend DA through A, and the point of intersection between B, the line B, is gonna be this point E, all right? So this line keeps on going and we're gonna call the point of intersection uh, of DA and this line B, <clears throat> uh, this point of intersection is gonna be E, all right? And again, we know that BE is parallel to AC. Well, if BE is parallel to AC, then I can say that angle one is congruent to angle three because these are two alternate interior angles. And I can say that angle two is congruent to angle four because two and four are corresponding angles. So if two and four are congruent, and one and two uh, are congruent, and one and three are congruent, then I can say that angle four and angle three are gonna be congruent because if two angles are congruent to congruent angles, then those two angles are congruent themselves. So angle three and angle four are congruent. So I can say that EA is congruent to AB. So EA or AE is congruent to AB. All right, now I set up my proportion. I'm gonna say uh, that AD <clears throat> uh, is to, and this is by the uh, side splitter theorem. So if we consider this as the base of the side splitter theorem, I'm gonna say that AD here, this length, is to EA, right, as CD is to BC. So AD is to EA as CD is to BC. Well, I know that AE is congruent to AB, so I can use substitution to substitute AB for EA. And now I have AD over AB, so AD, let's do this in red. Now AD over AB is going to be equal to CD over BC. All right, so we can also say that BC over AB is gonna be equal to CD over AD. Either way works, we can replace BC and AD <clears throat> as the two extremes. We can also replace AD and BC to set up different relationships, but they all yield the same value, that there's a relationship between the uh, opposite side, which is divided, and the adjacent sides uh, of the triangle. So again, BC is to AB as CD is to AD, or AB is to AD as BC is to CD. So that is the angle bisector theorem that's proven. All right, and let's uh, take one problem and let's see if we can prove that. We've got, uh, as classwork, we have uh, given angle three is congruent to angle five, and we need to prove that there's a relationship between RV to VT as RS is to ST. So this looks like the angle bisector theorem. Well, I know that vertical angles are congruent, so angle three is congruent to angle four. And if three is congruent to angle four and angle three is congruent to angle five, then I know that angle four is congruent to angle five. If angle four is congruent to angle five, then I have a ray that bisects VS, bisects RVT. So I can use the angle bisector theorem to say that RV is to VT as RS is to ST. And I can say this by the angle bisector theorem. All right, that's it for the lesson. Why don't you come and join us for the next uh, set of practice problems on three theorems involving proportions.